I'm Katie. I'm Josie. And this is something spookish. We're a little thrown off because we're doing video. And I don't know if you're listening, just listening, or also watching us now because, ooh, video. Ooh, the, we're the doing magic. it. We're we sending are. it. We're giving you the full scope of spookiness because we realize not only do you need the spooky stories, but good golly, do you need the faces. Oh, yes. Oh, the faces. Oh, Because you've already missed I... out on so many good faces at this so point. many good faces. Oh, and with the sound effects plus the faces, Josie, I'm excited. I'm actually really glad that we are trying this today because I have a really creepy story for you, and I think it will be our first episode of October. I'm excited. So if you're listening, I'm here for it. It's October. It's finally and October. If, it's finally October. And spooky season is truly upon us. So. I have a really creepy story that I've been promising you. I'm ready for you to kick it off. Oh, do you have any guesses? I have none. There's so many things it could be. Amityville? There are a lot of creepy things. I've been thinking about that one a lot, but no. Okay. What is it? Okay, ready? The blob. (laughs) Always something I've been curious about. The blob? Yeah. Is that a thing? I thought that was just a really cheesy movie. It's a, it's a really old movie. Great for back That's what I in thought. time. Yeah. Cheesy. Anyway, well, sorry. Okay. No, it's not the blob, Josie. If you must know, the way that I plan on chilling you to the bone tonight is with the story of Annabelle. Ew. Ah! Okay. The I'm doll. Excited. Yeah. The doll. Nasty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The original mm-hmm. doll. Yeah. I don't think Hit we've me. done a doll yet, and now it's time. It's time to do a doll. It's time to Those do things a doll. are horrifying. I know a little bit, but um, let's but see you what you got. You don't know all of it, uh, but you probably know about the horror movies, the whole Annabelle series, right? Of course. Have you seen it? Hell's no. Why? I'm not good. I don't have anyone watch right. horror movies with me. Let me tell Jeremy's you, I've seen. Scared. I've seen them all. I've probably seen them twice. And then I've also seen the, um, have you ever watched Zach Baggins' Hotel of Horrors or Mystery? Oh, haunt- Museum? Ha- Museum of Haunted Items. Yes. I know what you're talking he's, about. His, yeah, his, some... his other series that he has on Discovery. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He's got yeah, some that pretty, was pretty messed creepy. up dolls in there. Whoa. But it's also kind of, I think, like, his his idea and his imagination of what would be really creepy. So I'm like, ah, I don't know, that didn't happen. I don't know. Hit me with your dolls. Hit me with Annabelle. I'm so excited, because this is a, this is a, a Warren story. Oh, see, so you do know. Yeah. So you've seen, you did see all of the Annabelle movies. Oh, hell freaky? yeah. Yeah. How freaky? Pretty freaky? Uh, or was it dumb? No, they. I mean, they they were good, but I mean, I don't know if I'm a good tale for spooky stuff because I just don't get that scared. You're so magical. That's why you need to. Because I want to see scary movies. If you like scary they're... movies, watch it. Okay. All right. It's kind of like a, you have you have to watch it. You have to see it. If you like scary movies, you like have to go watch it. Well, maybe I'll watch it with you. Okay. Okay, deal. I've seen so many. I don't know if I'm mixing up the storylines or not. I could be wrong. Well, and since I haven't seen it, I don't know how accurate, like, really, if they pulled any. I think think they pulled the seeds of what originally happened to make the movies, but for sure, the way that the doll looks in the Annabelle movies is nothing like the actual Annabelle. So... Isn't she big? She's huge. She's like the size of a child. And she's mm. not porcelain. It's just a raggedy and doll. That's it. Okay. Just a a raggedy and doll. And I didn't realize that they were like four feet tall. The size of a small child. If it comes to life, it's killing me. It looks so innocent. Annabelle looks so innocent. Um, and she is the true inspiration behind the Annabelle stories. 
but there's there's the real story and that's what I was looking into and looking into the real Annabelle. I would be curious to watch the movies. I'm only going to do it if you do it with me because I'm really scared. I might be fine. I think I might be hyping myself up too much about how scary scary movies are. Maybe maybe I'm desensitized now. You at this point you might be a little numb. That would be great. I don't <laughs> do well with the visuals though. I don't um, like when you were describing Insidious, you described to me a scene where the thing in the corner. In the corner. Oh yeah. my god! Mm. Da, 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 it's in the corner. It's this thing. Oh god! Okay, that's I, I kind of want to yeah. see that one more though. That one's a. That's a. If you watch anything, The Conjuring, meh. All the ones before and after, meh. They're they're great. You have to watch them. But if you, I, I, there's a lot of people that don't like Insidious. I like Insidious. I thought that was a great movie. I want to see it. I'm because the plot, the storyline is really interesting. Okay, maybe we'll do that one, and then we can do Annabelle. But I'll tell you at least what the actual Annabelle is tell all me. about. The movies came out starting in 2014, 2013, 2014. But our Annabelle, ugh, the the original Annabelle, uh, goes back to 1970, when everything was fucking creepy. The 70s, mm. basically. The real doll has been blamed for demonic possession, violent attacks, and also not only near-deadly experiences, but having outright killed at least one person. So. Right. Maybe That's you can bad. tell me after I tell you everything if there's any correlation to the movies. Okay. 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 She's not scary looking. Like I told you, like in the, in a, in the Annabelle movies... They made her look like some kind of evil, evil, horrifying, like clearly freaky porcelain doll. And I'm like, that's a little overdone. Well, but okay. I mean, that's because that's spooky. Yeah, it is spooky, but it's like obviously spooky. I don't know. I, again, I need to see the movies, but she's literally adorable. If you've seen a raggedy uh, doll. Oh, you what do you mean she's you. adorable? She's adorable. She's got a triangle for a nose. I know, that's what I'm scared of. <laughs> She's got red hair, Josie. She's our people. Oh my god, not my kin. It is my kin. Ah. <laughs> Maybe you see the evil. Maybe you can just see the evil. But yeah, I was like, oh, she looks so okay. cute and disarming. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Put, put the image away. Don't look, <laughs> don't look into it too long. Okay, well, uh, that's your... Uh, okay, great. That's, that's And I don't know if us. you can tell from the image that you saw that that she's the size of a small child. Uh, I did, because I saw Lorraine Warren carrying her. And let me tell oh, you, yeah. um, I've just never been a fan of dolls. So no. I have some bias. Uh, no, no, they're creepy. I think I had um, a series of four dolls that were forced upon me. Porcelain dolls, the kind that come in the stands. You remember those? I remember yeah. those. And I had them yeah. my whole fucking life until like you were, I don't know, like maybe eight or nine, and the parents decided to force them on you. And I was like, great, take them. Fuck those things. Those were the things on top of my shelves staring down on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Watching must you. must have blocked that out. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Those, okay. They were probably fine. I'm sure they yeah, were Yeah, no, I, I, I'm fine. I had a great childhood. Yeah. No, no. Perfect. <laughs> Not cursed at all. Where Annabelle is today is in Ed and Lorraine's occult museum located in Connecticut. And Ed had built her her own glass enclosure. I think it's got the Lord's Prayer etched onto it. Or, or cross she's holding above it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the cross above it. And then there's that kind of infamous sign that says, warning, positively do not open. So that's... That is where she was taken to. But I'll tell you about how she got there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she didn't just show up in the Warrens Museum. Oh. No. Back in 1970, Bill had originally been a gift to a young nurse named Donna. But then there's also research that says her name was Deidre. Deirdre. But we're going to go with Donna. Okay. And that's what you'll see is there's some differing accounts. And so I will give you... The ones that I found, and we'll, we'll just go from there. So I'm going to go with Donna. So Donna received Annabelle as a gift from her mother when she was a young nursing student. 
It was for her 28th birthday. And Donna was stoked. She That's was really nice. excited. You know, I would be I would be like, ew, gross, but she was excited. And yeah, I when I turn great. 28, don't get me. Don't. A doll? Don't. A child sized doll? Now you're gonna do it as a joke, but don't. <laughs> I have a few years. You think I'm gonna forget, <laughs> which is my favorite part. Mm. I'll be like, look, I remembered. I remembered. <laughs> That's okay. I don't I don't wanna go source a doll that looks like Annabelle. I don't wanna touch her. I would be too scared. So you're probably safe. Right? I am yeah. safe. I know it. I know you. Yeah. Damn it. My threats are so empty. Donna was excited, and she brought it back to her apartment that she shared with uh, her roommate, who was another young nursing student named Angie. And at first, they kept the doll in the living room, and kind of as uh, room decor, like instead of a pillow on the couch, you know, they had they had Annabelle, who would cheerfully greet visitors as they entered the apartment. Very cute, very sweet, very innocent. It's great. Uh, but... Kind of quickly, kind of soon on, Donna and Angie began to notice that Annabelle seemed to move. She would be in a different position from when from when they had left for the day. They come back and she would have her arms would be different or her legs would be different, or she'd be in an entirely different spot in the room altogether. Mm-hmm. So they yeah. casually noticed that that was a thing. Mm-hmm. And so Donna would have her on the couch. What's that? What? No, keep oh. going. Right. I just hate well, it. Mm, good. As you should. So da- yeah, so Donna would casually sit Annabelle on the couch uh, before going to work. And on one particular day, she came home in the afternoon to find that her bedroom door was shut. And Annabelle wasn't in the living room. And when she opened her bedroom door, Annabelle was, I think the account says, face down in the middle of her bedroom. Very strange. What? Okay. What? Yeah, great. Because after, it, t- it must like take you a while after seeing something like slightly move and you're kind of like, I'm crazy. That's, was it like oh, that? Yeah. Okay. But now this, uh-uh, No. No. Why are you in my bedroom? Get out. Excuse you. Excuse you. <laughs> no. And why does it shut? Why does the door shut? I don't... I don't... Yeah, how did she shut it? Ew, you're very yeah. right, nasty. No, she opened it and she shut... Yeah, no. No. One, well, here's what I found. Um, a, 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 Just a shade stranger. Donna and Angie started finding notes throughout their apartment that said, help me. These notes, they, they said, help me, and they were written on parchment paper, which they were quite sure they didn't just have lying around. What do you need help with? What do you need help with, Annabelle? What's that? That's creepy. Can we help you? Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, we said we would leave notes. I'm not leaving notes anymore. No, I'm not doing anything. Oh, when we're haunting each other? Yeah, no. Yeah. No. No. There's no, nothing is sacred. Can't be leaving notes. <laughs> can't, can't do anything. It's been done by a demon. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. <sighs> leaving notes and shit. Just can you think about that for a sec? You need a pen. You need parchment paper. You're materializing your own parchment paper and, and your own pen. Like, oh, they're what's... probably just materializing the note. They're like, boom. That's right. Fuck. That's true. I'm not even going to write it. It's just up. Oh, yeah. No. no. You're, you're going a step too far. That's how I know you're not a ghost or a demon. You got me. Yeah. Now me on the other hand, still a question. Oh yeah. Because you, you knew the answer. I did know. Seems I've been pretty, uh, pretty okay with a lot of the things that you've said in the past few episodes too. Yeah. It's really, uh, <laughs> really creeping me out there. I don't know what you are, Josie. I haven't figured it out yet. I'm leaning towards an Andromedan. We'll Please see. proceed. The note thing is, I don't think we've ever heard... I don't think I've ever, ever heard of any kind of entity leaving fucking notes. No. Alright, so, so strange things are occurring. One morning, while 
Donna and Angie are eating breakfast at their table. They explained that Annabelle's two flimsy cloth arms levitated onto the table. Like she was sitting by the table. They had her set up by the table. And she's a doll, so her arms are down. And then in the next moment, the arms are levitated up onto the table. Uh. Yeah. That happened right in front of them. So they're going to get freaked out now because that's strange. It's not normal. It's not. And when this took place, it was really startling, but the nurses were also fascinated by it because at this point, they don't know that there's anything uh, malicious going on. When you think about all the activity that's happened, none of it's been malicious towards them. Yeah, it's just minor. Strange. Yeah, mm-hmm. just curious. What they thought was happening was that the doll's actions meant that she was trying to communicate something to them. So they called in a psychic to do a reading and get some advice. And the medium that they contacted came right away and held a seance with the doll to try to get some more communication. While holding the seance ritual, the psychic reported that she was sensing the spirit of a young girl about six or seven years old, and that the psychic went on to explain that this child was killed outside of the apartment complex in a car accident, and that her name is Annabelle, and she's in that doll. So that's how the name Annabelle came about for the doll. I don't and so when the it. nurses, you don't trust it? No. I would trust it. I'd be like, that makes sense. You know, poor thing. Of course um, it makes sense. No, yeah. rightfully so. I'm just, I'm scared. Okay. Well, you know that there's, you know, some strange things afoot already. But the psychic picked up on that, so. The psychic picked up on a little girl. That's what, what she was presented with. Yeah. Okay. And that's all. After processing kind of what they had heard, the nurses believed that it was just a, the spirit of a human girl occupying the doll, as they were told. This is where we get into having slightly different accounts. And another account can, is a little bit more specific, saying that the medium said that the doll was inhabited by a, seven, a deceased seven-year-old named Annabelle Higgins, whose body had been found years earlier on the site where their apartment building had been built. So that's another variation of it. Okay. Then in this version of the story, the medium claimed that the spirit was benevolent and simply wanted to be loved and cared for. That's all she wanted. That's a simple, that's a simple ask. Yeah. It's a simple request. I get it. And, And Angie and Donna thought that was very... You know, they it definitely worked on them. They felt sort of endeared towards the doll and felt bad for her and consented to allow the spirit of the girl to take up permanent residence in the doll. Yeah. No. no. Consent is a powerful thing. You can't, can't be doing that. So now they've been this... coerced into giving this thing a home. No. No. You, yeah. No. That's, mis- no. that's mistake number three or four. No. Oh my god. Oh my god. So, yeah, no, it's too late now. That is That's why too I'm late scared. now. Mm. Ooh. And so after this, uh, there, I think things were okay for a few days, but then some darker activity began happening to Donna's fiance, Lou. And this is another case where the there are a couple different accounts of what happened. I have at least two or three about what may have happened to Lou. Apparently Lou, the fiance, was sleeping on the couch uh, that Annabelle was seated on, on the opposite end. And that all of a sudden he woke up startled and sweaty. And when Angie, because I think Angie was in the room and she was like, what's wrong? Like, what happened? And he said, I just had the craziest nightmare. I had a dream that the doll there was crawling up my leg and got to my neck and was trying to strangle me to death. And because it is, because it, it is, because it, it is in the astral plane. Mm. Yeah, yeah, in the astral plane. Whoa. Oh no. Okay. 
And so in this rendition of the story, he gets really mad about, he just gets freaked out. He's like, eh, that doll, it got me. It's coming for okay. me. So Rightfully he, so. I would be pissed. I'd be like, this is not okay. Uh, so he picks up Annabelle and chucks her across the apartment. And wrong move. Then he also insulted the doll by shouting that she's nothing more than a raggedy Ann doll. She can't hurt anybody. Oh! Oh, are it's you too... asking for oh. it? Not only did he ask, he, he, he asked and he received. So as soon as he had said this and had launched the doll, the demonic presence attached to the doll, uh, apparently, all of a sudden, he just screams out in pain, and he's got what they refer to as psychic wounds, uh, which were four slash marks on his chest and three slash marks on his stomach. So a total of seven slash marks. And that his wounds cropped up like claw marks or scalpel incisions on the flesh. And that attack was indicative of that perhaps the spirit tied to the doll was not um, a six-year-old girl, but perhaps something more sinister. Yeah. Wow. But I mean, it's your first, it's your first sign, so I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's one rendition. That's, that's no go. That's no good. Another rendition. Oh, it's not Donna's fiance. My mistake. I don't know. Maybe this is just part of the weird renditions. It's like Donna's fiance or Angie's boyfriend. Either way, his name is Lou. And so in this They're rendition, together. it's Lou. Yeah. And so it does, it hurts the credibility that we don't have a, uh, a consistent story, but something happened to Lou. And in this version of it that I also found, he was in the apartment one afternoon while Donna and Angie were out. He's in the living room and from the living room, he could hear rustling from inside Donna's bedroom as if someone had broken in. And when he checked the room, there was no sign of forced entry. Instead, he found the Annabelle doll lying on the ground. The other versions talk about him being attacked, like attacked by, like physically attacked by the doll upon waking up from his nap. And so I'm like, okay, so so far we've got attacked in a nightmare and then psychically scratched after throwing the doll across the room. And then this one, he's hearing noises from the bedroom. He opens up the door to the bedroom. And as soon as he does that, he feels searing pain um, on his chest and finds that there's bloody claw marks running across his chest. And that two days later, they completely vanish. Completely vanish out of nowhere. I mean, I believe that story. I believe the it, nightmare and psychic wounds over the other stories. I do too. And I don't know though. I don't, I don't like that there's multiple versions of it because it's like, well, which one is it? Because now you've just hurt the credibility that you had for both. There's both a movie about it. They already hurt the credibility. Oh shit, you're right. So is anything like that an Annabelle movie? I think I do remember something like that, but I, it's been a while, so I could be wrong. What I do remember, that, which is a correlation, is that it's two roommates in a house living together. And then the psychic, I do remember them giving permission, I think. I might be crazy. I don't know. After this happened to Lou, whatever it was, something happened to Lou. Something happened to Lou. After this happened... Angie and Donna ended up calling an um, Episcopal priest whose uh, name was Father Hegan. And Hegan. Hegan contacted his superior, Father Cook. And it's Father Cook who alerted Ed and Lorraine Warren about the doll and about what was potentially going on with it. Ed and Lorraine Warren decide to look into this case and after interviewing everyone involved and I think spending a little bit of time with Annabelle, they concluded that they were really, well, they were really concerned, clearly, obviously, correct? Right. And they thought that the two young ladies really 
started getting into deep waters when they had basically started giving the doll their sympathy after they learned that she was a deceased child. So that definitely makes sense. Yeah. Starting to get, it's gained their trust. And I don't know, for some reason that's opening it up to being able to do weird, creepy things. The Warrens were firm believers that it was actually a demonic force in search of a human host within Annabelle, not a benevolent child soul. Sneaky, sneaky demons. And it is, and I get, and it just like makes me that much more freaked out about dolls in general because it seems like the some demonic forces will find a doll and be like, human? I gotcha. And then be like, shit, this isn't a human. But then it's like, well, maybe I can <laughs> use it. this to get, to get a human. I think it was kind of working on Angie and Donna. And maybe it considered Lou to be a threat. So attacked him or I don't know. I don't know what its creepy plan was. The Warrens were pretty sure that whatever was in Annabelle was viewing Annabelle as like a temporary host with the end game being a real, a, a, an actual human host to right to take yeah yeah that makes sense um i don't like it no but it makes sense why it would make more sense as to why dolls are common subjects of creepy things and the way that the warrens recounted it was that spirits do not possess an inanimate objects like houses or toys they possess people an inhuman spirit can attach itself to a place or object, and this is what's occurred in Annabelle's case. The spirit manipulated the doll and created the illusion of it being alive in order to get recognition, like with the hands on the mm-hmm. table and moving around. Truly, the spirit was not looking to stay attached to the doll. It was looking to possess a human host. So that's what they, that, that's what the Warren's account of it was. The Warrens noted what they believed to be signs of demonic possession within the doll, and that included teleportation, which was the doll moving on its own to different places, Uh, materialization, which is the parchment paper notes that materialized out of nowhere, and then third was the mark of the beast, which was uh, Lou's clawed chest. So however Lou ended up getting clawed, we're not sure, but... He got clawed, and that was the mark of the beast. He screwed. Yeah. Is he okay? Yeah, I think Lou's okay. I think he's all right. Lou's fine. They didn't mention him again anyway, so I hope he's all right. What the Warrens did to help out Angie and Donna, they ordered an exorcism of the apartment to be performed by Father Cook, and then once the exorcism had been completed, they took Annabelle out of the apartment and to what is hopefully her final resting place in their occult museum in the hopes that her demonic reign would finally end and really would just get worse. As as they do, yeah. As they tend to do. As they normally do. And so after they took Annabelle, the Warrens did document several other uh, really unsettling experiences with the first one occurring just a few minutes after they took possession of her. In their car. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like you've either seen it or it's part of the movie or... It's part of the movie. Well, this supposedly really happened. Whoa. And yeah, really freaky. Again, this was after the exorcism had been done and the Warrens took Annabelle. I know you just saw that picture of um, Lorraine Warren handling the doll. It's massive. Which is a big no-no now. They took her placed her in the back seat of their car and buckled her in and they decided not to take the highway just in case there was any funny business from the stall um, in trying to you know, fuck with the car. Or, you know, it's just the safe. It was a safe call. It was a safe call to make. However, mm-hmm. even with the back roads that they were taking, uh, it, it still proved to be extremely risky So on their way home, taking these back roads, Lorraine claimed that the brakes either stalled or failed 
at least several times. Oh you know, my god. Each time this happened, it resulted in a near disastrous crash. They're god. okay? They're okay. They did not crash. They got extremely lucky. And Lorraine wow. claimed, and, and so I don't have the details of each of those, but it sounds like there were at least several times where they complete, like could have died, could have crashed the car, and it was because of weird malfunctions with the brakes. Lorraine cl claimed that as soon as Ed pulled out holy water from his bag and doused the doll with it, then that's when the issues with the brakes stopped happening. Wow, that's mm -hmm. insane really freaky that's screwed up okay i don't think it was like that in the movie i don't remember what they did but that's that's a little bit more scary you cannot yeah. kill ed and lorraine warren you can't no. kill them no we need them unfortunately they both passed rest in peace god bless you and lorraine warren mm -hmm. uh yeah but not because of this doll They're no like, no 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 luckily they made it back fine but once they got back to their home, Ed and Lorraine placed the doll in Ed's study. And that's where they reported that the doll levitated and moved about the house, even when placed in the locked office in an outer building. And they, the Warrens claimed that Annabelle would turn up later inside their house. Whether or not she was locked in Ed's study, she would turn up all over the house. Whether or not they locked her in a room in another building outside the house, she would still show up all over their house. Pop. Hey, what's up? No, no, not Sit. what's up. Go no. away. Leave, leave, leave. No. Leave. So. <laughs> you have to be invited. You did not have consent. So don't love that. Um, finally, when the ones were sick of this shit, they decided to lock her up for good. And so they, that's when they created that specially made glass and wood case. So they inscribed the Lord's Prayer and St. Michael's Prayer on that box. And Smart. for the rest of his life, yeah, I feel like that's probably the only thing that kept her from freaking teleporting everywhere. Ugh. For the rest of his life, Ed would periodically say a binding prayer over the case to ensure that whatever sinister spirit um, and the physical doll remained trapped in the case you gotta That's do what you gotta do you gotta lock it you gotta lock it down there's no messing around you really do she needs to stay because she's 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 on the hunt and i don't appreciate it it's very creepy since being locked up and having these binding spells done annabelle the doll has not moved again um there are and i can talk a little about in just a little bit how she people have claimed that she does move within the case but she hasn't been mm. getting out of the case. Even though she's That's not so getting weird. out of the case, she's still wreaking a decent amount of havoc on people from within her case. Not uh, surprised. No, and people like to challenge it, and that's when they get in really big trouble. I'm not sure if this part was in the movie, but it's probably one of the biggest stories associated with Annabelle after the Warrens had her in their possession. Uh, is that once a priest who was visiting the Warren Museum, he picked up Annabelle, and Why? even though they had told him not to touch her, like, do not touch her, he picked, this priest picked Annabelle up and started screaming about discounting her demonic abilities, and Ed was there, and he was warning the priest, do not mock this demonic power, uh, but the priest just laughed it off. And I think, I don't know what oh his God. thought process was about this, but I guess trying to be dominant and it's like, fool, what do you, no, what are you going to do? Like, yeah, you against a doll, sure, you'll win. You against a demonic Hi. force, yeah, you're going to lose. So Simple on mortal. his way home, typical mortal, <laughs> typical mortal, oh my gosh, such a human thing to do. <laughs> on his way home from the Warrens. He reportedly, oh yeah, this is so creepy, sorry. He ended up crashing his car and it was a really, really destructive crash and he was really lucky not to have died. And oh, what he reported in the last moments 
right before he crashed was seeing Annabelle in his rear view mirror in the backseat. Yeah. That's what he claimed. Well, dude, I'm sorry that happened to you, but dude. Don't do it. Okay. So it almost sounds like, because if that's true and he did see her, then it doesn't matter if she's in a case. She will still teleport her ass. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she, maybe she astral projected. That's exactly what she's doing. That's exactly Ooh. into the fourth dimension, Ooh. which is in the back seat of your car. Uh, ah. uh. <laughs> Not in the back seat of my car. God, that's the worst place to be. Don't do that. I always, Ugh. I always look back there. I'm like, okay, get to drive. Well, I'm really glad that. I don't have to drive home after this because I would be too freaked out. And cause I don't like, um, I don't like that. Yeah. No. <laughs> my God. I don't okay, want to drive so, at night. No, no, no. And just, just not after. Sorry if you're in your car. I didn't even think about that. People are listening to this, Josie, and they're in their car listen, right now. L- listen, you're fine. You're fine. It's fine. We're listen here. to we my sweet, you. soothing voice. No one's here. It's just us two redheads. Yes. No spooky the, things, the although we're talking about it. You're just enjoying the you're just enjoying the ride. There's it's nothing fine. behind you. Don't worry about it. It's That's fine. Right. Good vibes. Yeah. Good vibes only. Annabelle's in Connecticut. You're fine. Don't even worry about it. You haven't even mocked her. See? You're fine. You're fine. It's good. Uh, <laughs> that was one time. And then there was another time, Josie. There was okay. another time. Years later. You know, the museum would have tours and people would come through and get to see all the different occult objects. And when one of the tour groups was coming past Annabelle, one of the guests started rapping on the doll's case and laughing. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Started laughing at the doll. Oh, my and God. And just talking very loudly about how silly it was that people believed in any of the stories around her and that a doll could do any of the things that it was said that she had done. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. that's great. That's great. Yeah. Yes. Poke the, poke the bear, tap on the glass, piss it off. Great idea. Great idea. It's looking into your soul. It's literally looking into your soul. Unfortunately, this turns really dark, really fast. Very no. Dark. Is this the one? Is this the one? This is the one. So, oh my God. He was there with his girlfriend when they oh left my God, the how- museum. Oh my God. They left the museum. They um, left on their motorcycle. And the the guest who had antagonized Annabelle was driving the motorcycle. His girlfriend was in the back. Motorcycle. They lost control of the motorcycle and crashed headlong into a tree. And he was killed instantly. And his girlfriend barely survived. And later... She claimed that at the time that the accident happened, they had been laughing about the Annabelle doll. Oh my god! So you, that's awful. That's and like awful. this is a true story. Like he, like this guy died. Like the, oh my god! There was a motorcycle crash on their way back from the Warren's museum, and whether or not it had anything to do with Annabelle, but the girlfriend remembered that they were laughing about the doll. Oh, when that the poor crash girl. Happened. That yeah. guy, though. Why? Ugh. You would never, you would never imagine that that would happen. So I get, that... I, get, I get, I get the perspective of making fun of something. I do, and I, oh man, that's that's so sad. It's Rest really peace, sad, but it it's it's really 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 sad. Yeah, for I think we have to be really careful about the things that we mess mm-hmm. with. You do. You. It's just why not just be on the safe side. Just don't make fun of anything that is reported to be evil. Just, just in case. Just there in was case. a warning. There was a warning on the box. Already. Well, just or is that when the warning came in. up? No. Well, the yeah the 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 sign of positively do not open but he was like tapping on it i mean the she was in the case all the stories were already out there's a reason she was in the occult museum in the first place so yeah i have i have so much like like i want to give you so much sympathy and like empathy it just it's but at the same time because it's like it just seems so 
preventable, like, but only in don't the sense fuck of, with shit. But it's so counterintuitive because it's like, okay, like you have an open bear trap, right? Don't, yeah, clearly we're not going to feel as bad if you are like, oh, the stupid bear trap. Nobody thinks anything's going to happen. And then when like as is humans, enough. like it's his way to figure it out, to test it's it. it's just a doll. You're not going to think, yeah, it's just a doll. It's just but a doll going with a scary to, story. The Warrens were famous for so long. You're going to the Warrens Museum. I mean, there's a lot of skeptics. They're and I think there was a lot. I get it. There was Ugh. a ton of controversy around whether or not uh, the Warrens were frauds or not. Legit. You know? I, yeah. 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 That's fair. So. and but, It's hard it's, either way. It is. It's just, it's really, really tragic that, that he died and his girlfriend almost died and that they happened to have been antagonizing the doll right before and laughing about the doll at the time of his death. Uh, and so we, won't, we, we don't know, but the, those are very strange. And I hope probably, she's okay. I'm sure she's not okay. I hope We hope you're okay. Please let us she know lived. if you're okay. She lived. So. Oh my God. So that's the only documented death caused by Annabelle that that we uh, supposedly know of. And again, could have just been coincidence, but these were the circumstances surrounding that death. Crazy. And so over the years, the Warrens continued to talk about these stories as proof of Annabelle being and having horrific powers. But none of these stories could be corroborated. Like the, the names of the young priest and that the names of the motorcyclists, those were never divulged. So that takes okay. away credibility. Neither Donna nor Angie, the two nurses that were Annabelle's first like victims, uh, they never publicly came forward with their story. All of these accounts came from the Warrens. And then neither Father Cook nor Father Hegan appeared to have mentioned the exorcisms of Annabel and the apartment. Um, they never mentioned it or talked about Annabel ever again. So these are... Okay. It, it hurts the Warren's credibility of these stories because we literally have to take their word for it. Right. And definitely room for speculation. It's important to mention those pieces as well. And That's fair. although these are the stories of supposedly what happened and the sort of the lack of evidence that unfortunately leads us to not being able to know for certain that these events occurred. I'll talk to you a little bit about why I still think Annabelle is extremely haunted and why the stories might be true because there's still some additional evidence of her being, having demonic, being demonic, being a demon. All that okay. evil, crazy I'm here stuff. for it. I'm ready. Yeah. So even though Ed and Lorraine Warren, they have both passed away at this point, their legacy has been carried on by their daughter, Judy, and her husband, Tony Spera. And, no way. And, yeah, so there's Tony Shout Spera. Shout out. Yeah, yeah, he's got a YouTube channel I watched some of. It's really cool. And until Ed Warren's death in 2006, he really considered Spera his like his demonology protege and entrusted Aww. him with continu continuing his work and caring for all the occult items in the museum. That's awesome. And when I was listening to Tony Spears' YouTube channel, it, he seems really down to earth and like very, like a straight shooter, but like with paranormal stuff. And okay. he explained that Judy's like the, you know, the daughter of Ed and Lorraine Warren, like she is freaked out by yeah. stuff because she's seen a lot of stuff it sounds like she does possess some of the abilities that her mother had and she just would rather protect herself so tony yeah. is really the one who has continued on um, well and in the movie they show their daughter and they're like don't go in this room this is a bad room don't go in this room because they kept all their stuff in their house actually while they uh, had their daughter uh, and they were like and so i feel like she and then the movie that shows her going in and looking at the doll Ooh, yeah so i'm sure Ooh. oh my god to talk to her. her oh i want to talk to her so bad judy 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 
We understand. I'd be scared too. I'm so scared. Tony's, tell me about Tony's it. down though. Tony's down. Thanks, Tony. Somebody's got to do it. Someone's got to continue on the legacy. So he is currently the caretaker of Annabelle, of the Annabelle doll and her protective case and all those other occult objects in the museum. And as that caretaker role, Tony continues to caution visitors about Annabelle's powers. He takes it very seriously and he makes sure that, you know, there's no rapping on the glass or making fun of the doll. If Good. Can. So, She's life. And so people will ask, you know, is it dangerous? And Tony yeah, it is. Says, yes, it is the most dangerous object in the museum. He believes this hands down. Oh my God. I believe Tony. I believe Tony. I believe him. I believe him. Because why not? Because you know what harm would happen by believing him? None. There could be harm if you don't believe him and he's right. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to say, okay, Tony. Yeah. Do you have an example? Someone didn't listen, didn't they? Well, Tony has said a few other things about the doll since taking, basically taking on the caretaker role. And I did read a little bit more about why the Warrens were, like, their credibility was really hurt over time. I don't have enough information to go into this, but it just sounds like they were really questioned on things like the Amityville case and a lot of people trying to debunk them. And I just don't have enough information to say yay or nay either way, but I do believe that they are... If they, if, even if they weren't correct about everything, I think that they were sincere in trying to protect people from demonic forces. So, yeah, there are a lot of people out there who still doubt that Annabelle has these demonic powers, and so Tony talks about her uh, like in, in a comparison to like messing with Annabelle. He says is similar to playing Russian roulette. He says, there might be just one bullet in the gun, but why would you risk it? Why would you risk pulling the trigger? Just don't That's do a that. really, really good analogy. Yeah. Oh my like God. Maybe you mess with her and nothing happens. Great. But maybe that one time or you're just the wrong person at the wrong time and something horrible happens and why would you why would you risk it? And he's saying that that possibility he he believes whole, wholeheartedly that that risk is there. Kind of recently, so in 2020 there was kind of a bit of a a bit of a scare because there were rumors circulating that Annabelle had escaped the occult museum. Oh, I feel like I heard that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it, it, it's still temporarily, temporarily closed down. So it's not open to the public, something to do with zoning issues. I think they're looking for a new space, but uh, the rumors of Annabelle having escaped happened while the museum was closed down. Tony alleviated these rumors by posting online and saying, you know, doing a little video with him and showing here's Annabelle, like she's still here. And okay. people were freaking out though. <laughs> because they I'm were sure. like, where is she? <laughs> like, what is she What do you doing? mean she's out? Yeah. And he's like, she's not out. She's still here. But he did say if she had escaped, I would have been extremely concerned because that would have been a huge issue. But she, but she's not, she's right here. She's fine. He said that she's, nothing nothing to play with but he does no. have a couple of stories so yes i'm gonna tell you just yes. a more story about t um tony's experiences with people who have come to visit and then i'm going to tell you about uh, a paranormal investigation that centered around annabelle and what happened during okay. that investigation oh, so, i'm stoked yeah it's it's, ooh, it's it, it really freaks me out and when they do open the museum again i kind of want to kind of well we're going we're gonna do it all right. Are we going to Zach's? Zach Bagans? I, I call him Bagans. You say Baggins. Like Frodo Baggins. Zach. Well, Baggins. apparently everything I say is inaccurate, so oh, don't that. trust me. Does that me. mean that I'm right? Yay. That means probably that you're right. And <laughs> if you can't tell at this point, we have got momentum. We're going everywhere. Shit. Everywhere. God damn it. It's okay. 
I'm gonna so. learn the protection measures. I'm gonna be fine. Get yeah. ready. Okay. Not for every tour group, but for many of the tour groups before the place closed down, Tony would go uh, and sometimes be a tour guide and walk with the groups. And cool. one woman came up to him on one of these occasions and she said she had, I think, been dreaming about Annabelle and just thinking about her nonstop for days and that she came to the occult museum solely to see Annabelle. And it was all she could think about. Tony was like, okay, cool. Well, you know, would you want me to take a picture of you next to her? And she said, yes, absolutely. And she was with her friend. So no. Tony took a picture of this woman next to Annabelle and then gave the phone camera to her friend and said, if you want to take a picture too, so you can get a couple of them. And so then her friend took a picture of the woman next to Annabelle. And nothing happened. They were going to go outside to look at the uh, monument dedicated to Ed Warren. And as they were all walking outside together as a group, this woman started tugging on Tony's arm. And he was saying, you should look at this photo. Like, you should see, like, do you see anything? Like, I feel like I see something, but I don't know. Tony's looking at the photo. The entire doll and the woman were in perfect focus right? But the eyes of the doll were a little bit blurred. And this doll has button eyes, right? It's a Raggedy Ann doll. And then Tony says that he could see what looked like eyes situated behind the blurred button eyes. Um, hmm. Yeah. I could not find this photo. Damn it. Dang it. I didn't look very hard. I'll look hard. Okay. <laughs> you I got you. <laughs> yeah. So there were these eyes situated behind the eyes in this photo that he knew he had taken. And he could he could see that the eyes behind the eyes, that they were looking towards the right where the woman oh was standing next to it. God. And then in the second photo that her friend had taken... Um, you could see the second set of eyes in that photo as well, but this time they were looking to the left. Oh, oh my yeah. God. He went back that night to try to replicate it and took dozens and dozens and dozens of photos of Annabelle and couldn't get anything, anything of any kind to, to see what he had seen in those other photos with the eyes. Oh my gosh. I'm freaked out about it. That right. is super scary. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like it. And so Tony says, um, when you go up against anything evil, anything evil, and this is this is uh, something, th these, this was part of his closing remarks in one of the YouTube uh, channel shows that I was watching of him where he was talking about people's experiences with Annabelle. And so kind of wrapping up interacting with evil he was just saying that uh when you go up against evil you go up against something that has the wisdom of the ages that's cunning and conniving and wants you to suffer I'm like we're yeah. no match we're no match no we're no match I can't no i just would really quickly love to tell you about the time that ghost adventures did a little a little paranormal investigation on Annabelle. Yes, please. But shit was freaky. Shit was freaky. It's not always freaky. This was freaky. And this is in 2017. Zach had asked Tony Sparrow to bring Annabelle to his haunted museum in Las Vegas. And Tony oh ended up agreeing because he knows how many people watch ghost adventures and might get a decent warning about how truly scary Annabelle is. Tony brings Annabelle into the museum in a locked trunk. And like, oh my God, could you imagine being on that Driving? Or driving flight? or whatever. Well, he was in Connecticut. So I imagine he, I imagine he flew. I don't know. And not knowing oh that God, the I'm Annabelle gonna... doll's on your plane. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Yeah, that's it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. 
Tony brings Annabelle into, into the museum. She's still in this locked trunk, and he starts talking to Zach. They're just doing an introduction, and then they go their separate ways so that Zach can kind of get ready for uh, the mating of Annabelle. Dude, and Zach we... messes with, like, shit, like, the devil's rocking chair. He oh. sat in that shit and did the Estes experiment. He did it in that chair? Yes! He did the Estes method in the devil's rocking chair? Yes! What is wrong with him? Yes! And one of the guys who did it in an interview, he didn't do the Estes method, but he, it was, like, just a TV goer who sat in the chair. He did end up having chronic back problems the rest of his life, and he still does. I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that. He was, like, a, the host of a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. And he sat in it, and he got, no, no, no. You don't mess with it, but apparently Zach can mess with it. But he- I don't oh, understand. Freaking Zach. Freaking hey. Zach. What is no Tell name? Me. How are you doing this? Zach, email us. <laughs> <laughs> Get on it, Zach. We've been waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for every story of all your items. Please That's right. tell me. Yes, all the stories. So he's preparing to meet Annabelle. He's really excited mm -hmm. about it. Right. But as he's getting ready, he gets really dizzy and disoriented. And it's affecting him so much that he goes to find Tony to ask if this has ever happened to anyone else before meeting Annabelle. Tony said, yeah, it does happen to people. And we, he had a name for it. He said, we call it a forerunner. And that's what will happen when Annabelle doesn't want to be seen, doesn't want to meet you. She will fuck with you ahead of time. And he said, Annabelle doesn't want to be shown. So she's affecting, she's affecting him. She doesn't want to be outed. Sounds like she doesn't want to be outed as a, you're blowing her cover, man. You're blowing it. Well, kind of, not really, but I, I get it from. I know it's, it's, it's I far along. It. We already know you're a demon, Annabelle. You're not fooling anybody. Yeah, you're not hiding it. No, we already know. But Zach starts feeling better and he's ready to meet Annabelle. Nice. And. So they're getting ready again, and one of the cameramen lets Zach know that there was a strange audio anomaly that he had picked up while Zach and Tony had been talking about the forerunner what thing. What they say? played it back, and it was a weird whining sound that you could hear over their voices. Like, it was weird. It didn't... It kind of sounded like a child, but it, not really. It was just this weird whining sound. Okay. Weird. Before handling the doll, because they're going to do it. They're ready. And Tony's now preparing to get Annabelle out of the case, ready to meet Zach. So he gets, he takes this very seriously, which I appreciate. First, he soaks his hands in holy water. And then he does a series of prayers around himself and Annabelle. And then he puts on these gigantic padded gloves. Um, that's when he takes oh the doll God. out of the case and puts her in, like, the small chair and tries not to handle her for more than a few seconds. My God. He's, oh, my God. The, the, he's, the precautions. He's not the safety equipment. Out. Do not touch Annabelle. The PPE. Do not touch. <laughs> the PPE. Do not touch Annabelle. Don't do it. Zach comes in. Oh, my in. God. Okay. And Tony does um, a holy water blessing around Zach to protect him as well. Making it very clear, do not touch the doll. Don't touch the doll. He touches it. Well, what are you supposed to do? No, no. He's making it very clear. And he is trying to warn Zach by talking about the stories that we talked about a little bit earlier, how this guy had been Don't tapping fuck on with the it. Glass. Yeah, he'd been tapping on the glass. And Tony said that what the guy had said was this is bull if this doll can put scratches on someone then do it to me and ed warren had been there and told the man to leave like you need to go now and that's when the motorcycle crash happened was right after that oh my god tony's really trying to warn zach that this is not not to be messed with tony leaves but he still has surveillance on the room. So Tony's not in the room with them, but he's keeping an eye on them um, with the uh, other IT people. 
Because we don't trust Zach fully. I'm no. sorry. No, we don't. We don't. Absolutely not. You're a and great guy. But you got to have another set of eyes on you. Sorry. You can't be trusted. I'm sure that's part of the agreement of, okay, I'm, I can bring Annabelle there, but only um, if X, Y, Z. Oh, my God. So I'm okay. sure that was part of it. So in this room, it's it's Annabelle and it's Zach and Billy and Jay. And there's this fortune teller, the one of these animatronic fortune tellers in the room, you know, where you put a quarter in and they move around and they like tell you. A fortune. Yeah. 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 So Zach noticed weird lights in or around it. And I don't really know what that means, but because I couldn't tell what he was talking about when I was watching the episode, but he, he unplugs it. And right after he unplugs it, the animatronic fortune teller says something. And they all start freaking out because A, it's unplugged. B, you need to put a quarter in it. And <laughs> obviously none of these things had happened. And what the word that they had all heard was it's either electricity or the electricity. So that's going to come back a little bit later. Okay. So strange thing numero uno. And now they've got their equipment set up. They've got, what's it called? Um, like spirit box where it'll provide text. Oh, the, the, word. the spirit box with the word box. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know what yeah. you're talking about. Annabelle is in this chair and she's in this room with all these other cursed dolls. Like a whole room of cursed dolls. And they've the the white noise one, the white noise box. What is it called? Spirit box. That is the spirit box. Okay, where you can hear the words come through. They also have an uh, an SLS camera focused. Those focused are weird. On the they really freak me out. But first, they hear a voice come through saying "listen," and then they ask "listen to who," and then a low male voice says, "I can't do it, Annabelle." Annabelle. Annabelle. <laughs> Why are you so good at this shit? No. <laughs> How do you make your? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yes, was that good? Yes, yes. No. Was that you. was that on point? I really. Wanted I can't to do, do it again. That's for sure. <laughs> That's I'm about... sure you putting your all into that. <laughs> I put my whole. I put my whole face into that. You should. That's say. if what came out of my voice came out of that. Fuck that. Really That's scary. That's horrifying. Not okay. So, listen to Annabelle is what it's saying. And so Zach asks, what do you want, Annabelle? And then the response comes, you. No. Not me. And it's not me. Says, it's not me want... you're looking for. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> you just burst out into song when you're scared. <laughs> I don't know if I want to watch a scary movie with you. <laughs> You know, if it was a real situation, everything, I would, I win no matter what. People are like, what is she doing? And then I take my exit. Oh, yes. you've thrown the spirits it. off so much. Sorry. All right. Sorry. I my heart's elevated. You it's just the roads, the roads in front of you. Please go on. <laughs> what, is, what does Annabelle want? She wants you. She says to Zach, you want me, Annabelle, said Zach. And then she says, us. Who's us? She wants them together. Oh no! Oh, all. Or is the demons. there more than one in her? I don't know. Or is yeah? Or is it the other haunted dolls that she's surrounded by? I don't know. I don't know what us means. And then Aaron can hear a snarl from inside the room. Oh, I hate girls. That. I hate snarls. And now, and now they switch to the piece of equipment. There's a couple of different pieces of equipment where. It'll um, just tell you the words that are coming through, but this is the one that's on a computer screen rather than a handheld device. So oh, this is that's the trendy. one that that they're working with right now, and they've got the SLS camera. They've got the camera trained on Zach, who's kneeling by Annabelle, who's sitting in the chair. He's not touching her because those are the rules. <laughs> Two figures show up on the SLS camera. <laughs> Zach's oh. figure is being mapped. And then out of Zach's mapped figure breaks off a second stick figure. 
like emerging from from Zach's stick figure. A second one is breaking off. What? Once it breaks off, it then goes into Annabelle. Uh huh. It, it, it then it's it basically breaks off of Zach, like stands on top of the Annabelle doll, and then disappears inside of her. Oh so. my god! It attached. So it was in you. Ew! It already got him. Oh god! I don't know. Uh, it's all Zach. Confusing. Are you okay? He's not okay. He starts zoning out, and as he starts zoning out, he starts feeling like he wants to be really protective of Annabelle, and says he feels really connected to her and that he really wants to touch Annabelle. Really, no. really. He no. needs to. I like know I you said, need to, but you don't. Don't need to. It's a trap. And Do she got touch. him. Oh my God, she got him. Well, so to remember Tony's watching and Zach is saying Tony. out loud, like, I feel really comfortable around her. Like, I'm so, like, I, I feel really out of it, but like, I feel really good. And, I just feel like I really need to touch her. And so Tony hears this and he has, he's able to he's uh, book speak it. to them. No, no, no. Oh, no way. Doesn't he doesn't even get, need to there's, run. There's two way audio. There's two way oh audio, Josie. Yeah, no, Tony knew. Tony first saw this. 21st kind of century. He's watching in another room as the SLS figure is now, it's, it's remapped. And it keeps going back and forth between Zach and the doll. Back and forth and keeps like just like phasing in and out of both of them. I'm and sorry. <laughs> I, I've never seen that. No. No. Neither have I. I'm sorry. Nothing no, should be mapped. The doll should not be mapped. I understand it has a human form. It should not be mapped. There's no reason. Because there's energy in it. It's pick. Okay. It's demon. Tony says, if Zach touches it, he'll be inviting evil. Zach responds, I'll accept it. He's all zoned out and he's like, I'll accept it. No, you, you won't, would, Zach. you crazy thing. Don't, no, no. Tony says, no, and that they need to put Annabelle back in the case right now. Like, Tony's done. Tony has lines and he's like, Zach's about to cross that line. And as Tony is saying this through the two-way communication, like the speakers in the room, or I don't a uh, device that will show the words that are coming through the spirit box, the words now come up, Anne and God come up on the device. Anne, as in like the name Anne, or yeah. and God? Like Anne. Like Anne. A N N God like the name. So Dude, Anne, it probably is like Tony. Tony's too strong. And it's once it was like I can do more damage if I'm with Zach. Let me yeah, try to get Zach. And I need to do it now because Tony's It's my only opportunity. Tony's gonna fuck up my fun. Yeah, he's on his way. Oh my god. So Tony has now said we need to put her back. If we're done. We're done. We're done. We're putting her back in the case. We're done. Zach says, please, I will give you anything. Please let me hold her for one second. And Tony has to say, no, Zach, you cannot. She's taking control. Don't do it. And again, he's not in the room because he's being, he's remote. And he's just like, so technically there's nothing Tony can do unless he starts booking his ass down the hall. But the device now starts, it's called a talking EVP. And that device oh. now says, ugh. Well, and Zach is, like, going crazy. He's saying that the desire to, to, to touch Annabelle is overwhelming. And then the device says grab, and then it says foot. And Grab foot! Just, grab foot. That's what the device says. And Zach is saying he's feeling nothing but love and good. And then the EVP says Jesus. And so it said grab and foot. Tony enters the room and Zach tells Tony that he accidentally, he <gasps> thinks, grabbed her foot. Oh, you dummy! How? She told him to. To grab? 
No, no, we don't see this. We don't see it. We don't see it. What are you doing? You do see it. He does it. You're like Zach. Oh, he grabs your foot. He grabs your foot. He grabs your fucking foot. Oh my god. Oh, you're done for. I know you're not done for. What the? Oh, I'm gonna have to cut this all out because I'm screaming. No, I love it. You have to keep it. How dare you? What is happening? And then, and then to Tony, he's like, I think I accidentally grabbed her foot, but she told me to do it. Oops. And I think it, it might not have My- happened, but I vaguely recall having grabbed her foot. Yeah. No. 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 Ah! No, no. You don't do that. He said don't do it. What do you do? You do it. I don't know. I know that you're possessed, but still you're Zach Baggins. 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 I don't know. I don't know. You're, you're something. Baggins. You, 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 Zachary. you, good sir. You, good sir, are, are used to this kind of shit, and you should be well protected. And happy. Yet. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. yeah. No. He thinks. How is he not dead yet? He. Hint. He's, he's not like dead. Worshipping her though. He wasn't making fun of her. You know. I, oh yeah, yeah. But at the same time, she was, was already in him. Her. She already got She's him. She's already got she her. Already got him. him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what is happening? And so he has and now you grab her foot. Happen. He's done okay. Her foot. You see, he did. He did it. You gosh darn grab and, that that gosh darn foot. Yeah. And and they catch it on camera. They catch it. On, I think Billy and Jay saw it right away, and they were like, "Zach." Because <laughs> I wonder if you raise your hand. Thing, like we caught you on camera. Freaking stupid, Zach! Raise your fucking hand, my guy. God. He got into her brain. God. Or no, she got into his brain. She got she got him. And she got him quick. Okay. okay. Yeah. And gotta so let it go. Clearly Zach is fine. He's not he he hasn't died, he's fine. A couple of like kinda weird things have happened, but um the two weird things that happened were that when Zach got home that evening, as soon as he pulled into his driveway, he was home. He wasn't going any further. His odometer read 6666. Apparently. Hmm. I'm pretty sure you can jimmy that. I'm pretty sure you can you can do that. But maybe. If that was the case, that's really freaky. That's Don't like super that. freaky. That Don't like freaky. those numbers. No. Okay. And then the only other thing that happened to him, not the only other, I mean, is kind of a big thing, but he was having lunch with a friend the next day when a freak storm hits and and he does have recorded camera footage of the storm and it's pretty crazy it's very pretty violent windy kind of came out of nowhere and what happened was that uh lightning struck the lamp post that was right next to his car right next to his car struck the lamp post right there and that's when he remembered that the autumn that the animatronic fortune teller had said electricity electricity so who knows but freaking zach has fucked with the dipic box he has touched all of the things that you don't touch he's done it i feel like zach's a very interesting character i i I really want to understand better how he and maybe he's maybe he's haunted and cursed as fuck maybe he is how could you not be well, Josie, that's what I have for you for the story of Annabelle, the original. That is crazy. Creepy. I'm super scared of dolls, although you did tell me some things that I was super curious about, and I didn't get to see the uh, Zach Baggins part of it, but that is disgusting, and dang. Yeah. I'm good on dolls. I'm good. Are you good? I'm I don't good. need them. Oh, so you'll be excited to know about all the other dolls that I came across in my research about Annabelle and all the dolls that I now ha- have to cover. Yeah. That was amazing. Thank you. I love you so much for sharing. Mm-hmm. That was freaking insane and super spooky. And we're going to not have dolls in our life this October. Fair. But Agreed. if you have a spooky story, Caitlin, take it away. <laughs> but we would love to hear about it. You can send it to us at something spookish at gmail.com you can send us a dm on instagram at something spookish you can 
support the podcast by joining our Patreon, where we are soon going to start releasing some bonus episodes. Once we have those bonus episodes uploaded, I'll make sure to make those announcements on Instagram. And finally, we would really appreciate it if you would kindly rate and review our podcast. And um, would, you, would you be so kind as to give us a little leeway here on our first video? Because this is the first of our videos. We'll get better. We promise. We will. But We're going up. Yeah. We're doing it. We're doing it. Josie, just uh, to be on the safe side, I, I send you light. I send you light. Uh, I send you light. I take it. And, and we course, send. We send you light. Just in case. All right, love. Stay spooky. Stay spooky.